so uh, thank you everyone for uh, attending uh, today's seminar. Uh, so we have Gautier Poissonné from Max Planck Institute, and he will speak about uh, universal norms of periodic Galois representations and the fact from time curve. So uh, before we begin, I'll just uh, mute everyone. Uh, and if you have questions, you can uh, send them in the chat and then I will relay the questions to the speaker. Okay, so first, uh, thank you for the opportunity to give this talk. Um, so it's the first time I do a talk on Zoom, so don't hesitate to interrupt me if I'm going too fast, or if you have a question, of course. So I would like to talk about uh, universal norms of periodic Gower representation and the far content curve. The title has to be understood that we will use the fact fontaine curve to say something about universal norms of periodic error representation. So I will first start uh, to review well, what is the universal norm of periodic error representation, uh, what are the motivation to study this module, and then go slowly to the proof where the fact fontaine curve play a role. Um, so I will fix some notation for the rest of this talk. So we'll fix a prime number P, and we consider the field of periodic numbers, and we fix an algebraic closure. And inside this fixed algebraic closure, I will consider a finite extension K and an intermediate extension L. And uh, L can be anything, and actually it will be in the case of interest, it will be an infinite extension of K. So I will also denote uh, by GK the Galois group, GL, the Euler group of L. And we will also need later on the completion of all these fields. So I will put them now, so we are done. So CP will be the completion of QP bar for the periodic valuation topology. And L hat will be the completion of L. So now that we have this field, we consider a periodic representation of GK. So just to be sure we are all on the same uh, page, it's a finite dimensional QP vector space equipped with a continuous action of uh, GK. And inside uh, this uh, PID representation, I also fix a lattice, a ZP lattice, stable under this action of uh, GK. Um, yeah, so that's, that's our setting for the, the rest of this talk. And I will make an important assumption also for the rest of the talk. Uh, oh, oh, sorry that um, V is Durham. So if you're not familiar with the uh, Fontaine classification of uh, periodic representation, you can take that as a loosely V come from geometry, whatever it means really. But. Okay, so that's, that's the, the setting. So what can we do with uh, this object? Well, we can consider the first Galois cohomology of uh, GL acting on the quotient V over T which is really the continuous uh, group cohomology. And inside this uh, cohomology, Bloch and Cato have defined several groups. We, in this talk, I will consider only one of them for simplicity, mostly, which is the exponential Bloch-Cato subgroup. I will also give the definition later on from now, like for this moment, I would just say that uh, it's subgroup contain a lot of arithmetic information. And I will simply give an example for now. Uh, so let A be an abelian variety defined over K. We can consider the Tate module, which is this uh, inverse limit of multiplication by P. So this is a ZP, a free ZP module equipped with an action of Galois. And the representation we get by transferring by QP is the RAM. And so it's an example of a representation coming from geometry. Let's say earlier. And of course, the quotient here we consider everywhere is uh, simply the torsion P, to P power torsion point of the Abelian variety. And so now in this case, what is the group, uh, the exponential group here? Well, we can consider this sequence of multiplication by P, take the cohomology uh, associated with this uh, exact sequence, which gives the Kummer map, defined uh, here this kappa L, and uh, it turns out that uh, this exponential group is exactly the image of this uh, Kummer map here. So you see already in this example that uh, this uh, exponential group, uh, in this case, is, gives you exactly the L rational point of the Abelian variety. So it's already really rich as an object. 
and so also difficult to control somehow. So what do we want to do with this uh, group? Well, the goal, so I will set a first uh, goal that I will precise later on, is that we want to compute this uh, group when the extension is uh, an infinite extension. So why we want to do that? Well, it's written on the slide uh, at the top. It's mostly for it was our theory reason. So recall you, I would like to recall that the block at a subgroup are involved in the definition of the Selman group as local condition at P. And so in particular, if we get, if we have a nice description of this uh, group of our infinite extension, there are many results that we can uh, try to prove. At least their proof depend on the, this computation in P. So the most famous one is probably the control theorems by uh, Mazur. Uh, more generally, you can study the, when you want to study the structure of Selma groups that you need to have a nice description of this uh, block group. And also this description of our infinite extension play a role in the construction of PIDK pairings. So by pair U on the cover. And so, so far I didn't talk that much about universal norms, but actually it's because it's equivalent to the goal I set on the board. <coughs> and that's, it's more in this sense that I will talk about this. So let me give an example again with Abelian variety. So if you have an Abelian variety, you can consider the, the dual Abelian variety. And to compute uh, this exponential group, which is the goal I set here, by Tate duality, it's the same as to compute the projective system where the with respect to the norm map and where k prime go through all the finite extension contained in this big extension L. And so that's classically, that's this last module that people were looking at, but we will see that it's actually easier. That was an insight of uh, Coates and Greenberg that I will recall later to look at the dual side. So the behind that is really universal norms, but I will not talk about universal norms anymore. And so the, the motivation coming from Iwasawa theory is quite old actually, because uh, this uh, module were studied first by Mazur, of course, when he developed uh, Iwasawa theory for Abelian variety. And subsequently by many people, mostly uh, all the time for Iwasawa theory motivation. So I name a few here, it's far from, it's far from an exhaustive list. So Manin, Schneider, Azevin, Keller, Rubin, uh, important progress. But now I would like to recall uh, the result of uh, John Coates and Ralph Greenberg, which actually uh, contains all of this result of Manin and all these people, and uh, quite unified uh, what we know about Abelian variety for this question. And so Coates and uh, Greenberg uh, results really concern perfectoid fields. So I will set the, recall the definition here uh, it, we will not use the definition, but I just put it so at least uh, we know what we talk about. So it's a complete non-Archimedean field of residue characteristic P, whose valuation group is non-discrete, and the P power of Frobenius map on the, this ring of integer module P is surjective. The definition doesn't say much, but let me give you some example of, uh, of extension whose completion is a perfectoid field. So the first obvious one is the CP. CP will satisfy all of this uh, hypothesis here. But it's not really interesting if we take L uh, to be CP in our goal here. But some other extension would be, for example, the cyclotomic extension. So the, the little hat uh, at the end is the completion hat. So the completion of the cyclotomic extension is a perfectoid field. And you get a lot of other examples, for example, uh, by a nice result of uh, SEN. So if L is an infinite Galois extension whose Galois group is a Piedicli group and in which the inertia is open, then the completion is a perfect weight field. And uh, you might think from this example that uh, we are all just looking at Galois extension, but no, like a, oh, sorry. You can consider the extension where you add all the P roots of P and complete it. It's non-Galois, but uh, it's another example of a perfect weight field. And one reason I put this example uh, on the board is because later I will just talk about perfect weight field. But you see that actually it's very good for Iwasawa theory because the, this, the extension two, for example, the cyclotomic extension is 
the extension that we consider in classical uh, UASR theory. And the extension three and four are typical examples of extension you consider in non-commutative EWASR theory. So if you have a result uh, on universal norms for perfectoid fields, it's uh, very nice because uh, that's exactly the kind of extension you encounter in EWASR theory. Okay, and so now I will uh, re review the result of uh, Coates and uh, Greenberg. So I need an important definition for the rest of this talk. We have our fixed representation uh, V, and so we cut out inside a sub-representation V0, which is defined in that way. So it's the minimal sub-GK representation of V, such that the odd state weight of V over V0 are all uh, less than or equal to zero. So then we can consider the lattice uh, that given by T and subject by this intersection. And the inclusion now of V0 inside T0 give us a map in cohomology that I call lambda L. And it will play an important role in the following. And so now the result of Coates and Greenberg is the following. Um, take an Avian variety defined over K. So, it's a, like, well, I will talk about the map lambda L, so I'm thinking about V being equal to this VPA. Then if L is a perfectoid field, and actually the image of this map lambda L is equal to the image of the map kappa L. And to insist on that, I recall that uh, this image of map kappa L is uh, exactly the exponential block of subgroup here. And so, uh, you see this theorem is uh, quite nice because the Kummer map or the exponential block at a subgroup was defined via L rational point of a bin variety, which are quite difficult to understand or they behave in extension. While the second map is uh, very simple. So for, for example, the, the representation V0 does not even depend on L. So you, you can just check directly on V0 if it's all of V or nothing in V, etc. And then it's a simple map in cohomology. So this equality is very useful. And uh, indeed, um, Coates and Greenberg independently use this theorem quite crucially to prove important results in non-commutative view of our theory. So Greenberg in 2003, he proved a very general, general control theorem that completely very generalized a lot of the results, classical results of Mazur. And uh, Coates and Osan, they computed the Euler Poincare characteristic of a Selmer group of an elliptic curve over a non, -com non computative extension. And both these results are quite important in the non commutative Wasawa theory, and both they rely crucially on this result of uh, 96. Okay. And so now we would like to move to periodic representation. So let me again put the result of Coates and Greenberg on the board here. And so you see like uh, one remark is that all these objects aside from the map, uh, the Plumer map, are well defined for a periodic representation. So the map lambda L, the exponential uh, block Cato subgroup. And so Coates and Greenberg in the same paper, they ask the question, does there exist a similar an analog uh, description of the exponential block at a subgroup or the other block at a subgroup, but when V is a general Durham representation. And so that's the goal, refined goal. That's the question we are going to consider in the rest of this talk. And so what is known about that? Well, same time a lot, but same time not. So what I mean by that is that the cyclotomic case has been completely uh, answered by Berger and uh, perrin -Ryu. So Berger really uh, proved for all the RAM representation that the answer is yes. And his strategy is based on a previous work of perrin -Ryu that deal with uh, crystalline and then like with, with hypothesis. And uh, so it's very nice because cyclotomic extension is uh, important in other theory, but uh, basically that's it. At least to my knowledge, that's all. Uh, what we know about this question is on the board right now. 
So today I would like to explain how to get new case about uh, this question, answering new case. But before doing that, I would I need maybe to precise that uh, the problem, the, not problem, the downside of the proof of Berger and Perrin U is that it's very specific to the cyclotomic extension. So it uses uh, Perrin U big logarithm map, its relation with phi gamma module, and many tools uh, that are quite specific to the cyclotomic extension. So it could be possible to try to generalize this, but the tools are already difficult to define, so maybe it's not a good idea. And so, okay, so that's what we know. So the, the first result I would like to explain is the following. So assume that V is the RAM with odd state weight lower, less than or equal to one. Uh, then actually the answer to Coates and Greenberg question is uh, yes, you have exactly uh, the, this uh, description and actually it's exactly the same. It's really an equality in uh, that way. And maybe a remark is that uh, this theorem contains Coates and Greenberg results because the, this assumption on the odd state weight is satisfied by a variety and PDB group. And so that's this, uh, that's the main, most precise result. We will have another result later on, way more general without this hypothesis on the weight, but of course, less precise on the description of the exponential group. Um, so now I would like to start to go into the proof of this. But before uh, starting to talk about quite uh, maybe a bit abstract uh, Piedicoch theory object, um, I would like to quickly review simply the strategy of Coates and Greenberg because we will follow the idea mostly. So how does Coates and Greenberg prove in the big line? Like, how did they prove the, their theorem? So P can be in variety defined over K. And the first point is that we may assume that A has semi-stable reduction. So it's enough to prove this uh, theorem for semi-stable reduction. So the nice thing with the, in that case is that we can consider the commutative formal group associated to a narrow model of A. And why it's useful is because this narrow model uh, exactly gives us the, the Tate module of this neuron, of this commutative formal group, sorry, exactly gives us the representation VPA0 that we defined earlier to define the map lambda L. And so now that we have this, we can consider the diagram which is central in this strategy and will be central in our strategy uh, later on. So what is this diagram? The horizontal line are the Kummer map. So the Kummer map for the Abin variety and the Kummer map for the commutative formal group. And the vertical uh, arrow are simply given by the inclusion. But a few remarks is like because the Tate module of the commutative formal group is exactly this VPA0. Well, now we have this map lambda L on the diagram. And so we, this diagram, we can use it to compare these two maps, the, the Kummer map and the lambda L map. And also just to finish with this diagram, like the surjectivity on the left corner is given simply because the quotient of a by the commutative formal group is the reduction by mod p, and so it's the torsion point that appear, and so it's killed by the tensor by QPZP. And that's exactly uh, how Coates and Greenberg consider this problem. And what they do is that this is really the difficult part, of course, is that they prove that if L hat is perfectoid, then this Galois cohomology group. Of, of the commutative formal group is trivial. And actually they prove that for any, any commutative formal group, not just uh, one coming from abelian variety. And so these two steps are enough because now if you put back this uh, zero in the, this diagram here, you see that by commutativity, you get the equality of the image of kappa L and the image of lambda L, okay? <clears throat> and so we would like to, do something uh, similar. And of course, the first question is, uh, what are the analog of A and A hat for uh, a general periodic representation? 
Well, fortunately for us, this was done by uh, Fontaine quite some time ago. Well, not some time ago, but it was done by Fontaine. And it's part of his uh, theory of almost CP representation. It was published in 2003. And so, so now we want to, again, to insist on that, we want to get this analog of A and the commutative former group to have such the diagram, the, the first point of the strategy. And so it goes that way. So you consider the periodic period rings of Fontaine, the fundamental exact sequence. So if you're not that familiar, it's not important. Really. And you can tensor by V, uh, this sequence. And uh, we choose the lattice also inside V. So we take the quotient by this lattice T and we get this uh, exact sequence now. But now the Galois group acts on this exact sequence. And so we can consider the maximal uh, sub discrete GK module inside this. So what I mean by that is that it's on the right here, the, 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 the step we take is we consider all finite extension of QP, we take the Galois invariant and we take the, we take the union over this. And so we get a, a sequence of modules. So E disk V over T, TV, the tangent space uh, in QP bar. It's in it's a sequence of discrete GK module now. And this, mo this module is uh, what we want. So two points maybe I need to explain for that. So the first point is like if you started from an Abelian variety, so by that I mean V over T is the P power torsion point of an Abelian variety, then this E disk actually gives you back the point in the sense that it's the, the Galois module associated to the Abelian variety. And of course, you can see in the picture, there is no, we, it's up to prime to P torsion here. Okay, so that's nice. So all of this, of course, are a result of Fontaine's uh, paper. And the second point is that uh, it's also give us this uh, short exact sequence uh, with the exponential block at a subgroup here. So it's lemma slash definition, because if you know the real definition of the exponential block at a subgroup, it's a little uh, thing to check. And if you have never seen that, you can take this as a definition of this group. And you see that it's a sequence which is analog to the sequence for Abelian variety, where E disk would be the point of the Abelian variety. But of course, like uh, what I, it's clear from the, the description I just uh, made that uh, we can do the same thing for V0, this subrepresentation, and everything is functorial in this representation. So we can do that. And joining this uh, v, using functor AT and uh, this last exact sequence, we actually get the diagram one that we were looking for, the generalized diagram for Abelian variety. Okay? So that was uh, given for free by uh, Fontaine. And uh, so now we can try to do the same thing as Coates and Greenberg. I mean, uh, compute this uh, Gara group, the Gara cohomology group. Cohomology group, yeah, in the corner. So, for example, if we are able to prove that this is zero, if you put this uh, here zero here, you get the first theorem. And so that's what we want to do. <clears throat> Unfortunately, it's of course way less uh, easy than uh, than with a commutative former group because the strategy of Cotes and Greenberg to prove their second step, which is this vanishing of this uh, Galois cohomology group really relies on the fact that uh, a commutative formal group, you have a description through um, formal power series, and they do, uh, the heart of their paper is really computation, quite precise of this group relying on this description of the commutative formal group. So we don't have such a description for this group here that, that are a bit abstract. So we will do something else to attack the, this group. So instead what we do, is I put, this is the diagram, the way we define our, our Galois module uh, E-disk, okay? Well, these uh, periodic period rings, they come with a topology, the canonical topology. And so we can consider the topological closure of this module here inside uh, this big uh, periodic period rings uh, module. And so to, um, again, have an idea of what these things are precisely. 
So again, with Nabilian variety, we saw that uh, the E disk was up to prime to P torsion was the point of the Abain variety. And the topology you get from the period ring is actually the natural topology you would put on the uh, Abain variety. And the completion is simply ACP in that case. Again, it's everything up to prime to P torsion. But we still have to be careful with this analogy with the Abain variety because in general, the completion is way bigger than CP. We can have quotient of BDR plus. Uh, I will not say too much, but this analogy can be a bit misleading because it's too simple in some sense. And of course, the, the, the completion map that goes from E disk to E plus V, uh, E plus, sorry, uh, give us a nice map in, uh, in cohomology. And so our goal was to study the cohomology with coefficients in E disk. What we can do is uh, consider the cohomology with coefficients in E plus and try to compute E plus on one side and control this map. And so that's, I want to make the sum up of all of this in the next slide. So the situation we are, just to fix a bit the things. So Coates and Greenberg question was to compare the exponential block at a subgroup with the image of lambda L. The first reduction we did with the Coates and Greenberg strategy in mind is to compute the cohomology of this E disk V0 T0. And the second reduction, because this is difficult, seems difficult to do that, to be done directly, is that we consider the cohomology with equation in E plus that we hope that we'll be able to compute. Plus, we would have to control the completion map in cohomology. Okay? Um, and so now what I would like to explain is how to use the fac fontaine curve to actually completely compute the cohomology with coefficient in E plus. And uh, surprisingly, the problem, the reason there are some hypotheses in the theorem one comes from the control of this completion map, the second thing, which is a bit surprising because in the case of a variety, varieties, simply the PID completion, so nothing really happened in the cohomology. But in more general case, the, the, we get way more than CP and it's a bit difficult to control what's going on in a, some precise sense that I can explain later. So now I would like to really focus on this uh, group with coefficient in E plus and explain how to use the curve to say something about it. Is that okay for everybody? Okay, so the far front end curve. Um, so I need to say something about the object, but it's a bit difficult in a few slides. So I will denote it XFF. And what is it? So there is a close point on the curve. It's a scheme. And there is a close point on it where a way that like the complement of this point is simply the scheme, the affine scheme given by B, this uh, ring we saw, the PID period rings that we saw earlier. And the completion at this infinite point is BDR plus. So it's really a gluing of this uh, PID period rings. And so maybe a bit more to have uh, what's going on with this object. So the global section of uh, the curve uh, simply given by QP. And the etal fundamental group of this object is the Galois group of QP. But instead of what we are going to be interested in is not the curve itself, is the category of a vector bundle over it. And so, oh, it's not very, okay. It's a bit, uh, so the category of vector bundle over the curve can be described uh, quite easily as follow. So it's equivalent to the category where the data are triplets, E, 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 D, R plus and uh, Yota E where, uh, so the first one is a finitely generated BE module. The second one is a finitely generated BDR plus module. And the map Yota is an isomorphism like that. And of course, how do you get uh, such a triplet from a vector bundle over the curve? Well, you take the, the section away from infin this infinity point. So because it's the affine schemes, uh, spec uh, B, it will give you this first module EE. And then you take the, the, 
the sheaf at the, the sorry, I'm thinking in French. And with, uh, you take at infinity what's going on with this vector bundle, so you, you get a BDR plus module. And the map iota is simply given by the gluing data because you came from a sheaf to begin with. So uh, that's what's going on. And of course, something that I will not enter too much into details is that you have a Galois action on everything here. If you want. So you can consider the subcategory of the vector bundle that are GK equivalent for the Galois action. And on the right side of this equivalence, you just put a Galois action everywhere. That's, uh, that's the description of this category. And so an example uh, of a vector bundle that you can consider on the curve is simply given associated by a representation. So to a representation of GKW, you can associate it the vector bundle in uh, such a way. So you tensor by BE and tensor by BDR plus, and you have a Galois action everywhere, which make it uh, a GK equivalent vector bundle. And so I'm aware that this uh, bit uh, maybe super fast to talk about the curve, because I will just use it. So to, I put here a reference, which is very nice if you want to look more into the subject, which is the seminar uh, Bourbaki by Matthew Morrow in 2018. And so there is both a text and a video, which are excellent and very good to get an idea of uh, what this subject is. OK, and so how is it related to our problem, the computation of this uh, cohomology of uh, E plus? Well, the thing is like we can consider the inverse limit of multiplication by P of this E plus uh, V over T. And so this, what it is, it's a piatic Banner space with a continuous action of GK. And actually more precisely, it's what Fontaine called a almost CP representation. We will not need the, this category, but just so to have an idea what kind of object we are dealing with. And so now the thing, the, the, one, one of the crucial points is that there exists a vector bundle over the curve such that the global section give us back our module E plus V. And this uh, isomorphism comes with the Galois action on both sides. So this vector bundle really is GK equivalent vector bundle. And so to study the cohomology of uh, E plus, uh, we can study the cohomology, we can study the vector bundle uh, E plus uh, E calligraphic plus instead. Okay, and so explicitly maybe to to have an idea of what this thing here. So it's a a way um, yeah away from infinity. It's the same as the vector bundle associated to V, and we modify it at this point at infinity. It's not really important the description, it's just to maybe you have an idea of what uh, object we are dealing with. And uh, a reason I recall that uh, we had this object really is an almost CP representation is because the last article of Fontaine actually deal with this question. So he relate in a quite precise way the almost CP representation of GK and GK equivalent coherent sheaf of uh, the curve. So the arrow here, the, it's not an equivalence, but you can reconstruct one category out of another, okay? So the, the isomorphism uh, of E plus uh, with the global section of some vector bundle is not at all a surprise in this whole theory because it's, they, they really, yeah, you can construct one out of another. So it's not, not, not surprising this. And I mentioned also um, there is a result of uh, Arthur Cesar Lebras uh, who deal with the same construction, but without the Galois action everywhere. So it's a bit more general than the Fontaine uh, result. OK. And so we wanted to compute the cohomology of this E plus V. And now we are with a vector bundle. So it seems we just uh, try to escape. But actually, now we can use a fundamental result of Farg and Fontaine, who classify completely vector bundle over the curve. And so we will use that to say something about E plus V, E calligraphic plus V, and to deduce something about E plus V, and et cetera, et cetera. Come back. OK. And so to be able to say a bit uh, what is this classification about, I need to, again, briefly recall uh, the, what is the Ardern-Rashiman filtration of a vector bundle over the curve. And so now, 
somehow the nice thing is like you can forget all this periodic theory going on because we have a curve, it's complete, and uh, we can do geometry as usual. So we can define a degree of uh, the vector bundle and the rank of a vector bundle. And that's exactly what it is in classical geometry. So the rank is its rank. Uh, and the degree is like you take the determinant uh, bundle of E and it's the degree of a divisor of a section of the slide bundle. And so you can then define the slope of uh, a vector bundle, which is the, simply the, the fraction here, degree of a rank. And so now there is this classical notion of semi-stability. So a vector bundle is semi-stable if it is non-trivial. And we have this inequality of slopes for every subshift, every subcurrent shift. Okay. And once you get such a, uh, uh, invariance, sorry, there is a classical result, which is the give you a filtration. So the, the result like there exists a unique filtration, uh, like so, where each successive quotient is semi-stable and that respect this inequality on the slope here. Okay. And so of course, like the name are like the, this, the filtration given in the theorem, which is unique is the Ardern harassment filtration and the slopes, all the slopes here are the Ardern harassment slope of E. And so now I can uh, talk about the classification of vector bundle over the curve. So I will only need a subset of it. Like uh, it's uh, classification is a, uh, quite uh, detail. So the part we need of it is the following. So assume hell hat is a perfectoid field. Then the other Harassman filtration of uh, any GL equivalent vector bundle over the curve is a split GL equivalent. So both things are important, that it's split and that it's, the splitting is also a GL equi equivalent. Okay. And so this is a part of their uh, classification. And as a byproduct of these results, they get the following, which now is more clear why we're interested in this. Is if L is a perfectoid, and if E is a GL equivalent coherent sheaf over the curve, whose Ardern Harshman slopes are all strictly greater than zero, then the cohomology uh, of L acting on this uh, global section is trivial. And so now that's exactly the kind of result we were looking for to study E calligraphic plus, and therefore E plus. And so that's what uh, basically uh, I did. And so the first proposition is that the other Hachman of this E calligraphic plus are exactly strictly greater than zero when V is equal to this V zero. And um, before continuing to the proof of, uh, towards the problem of universal norms of Kotz and Greenberg, a small uh, remark here, a parenthesis, is that a way to prove such a proposition, of course, you could study directly the vector bundle E plus V, and it's doable, it's explicit enough, so you can do something. But actually, it's way more convenient to define a general modification of vector bundle Again, to be precise, I would have to say the RAM JK equivalent vector bundle. That's some technicity, technicity here. And this def def deformation, the model, sorry, modification is uh, like uh, so. And then the, this E plus V is a particular case of this modification, uh, which is you start with a vector bundle associated to representation and it's modified exactly in this E plus V. And the proposition then is, you have the impression there is almost nothing to prove and it's very useful to do that. I say that because if you're interested into looking to the curve, that's something you learn very quickly from the book of Farg and Fontaine. It's like you start with a problem on periodic representation. You consider, you associate the vector bundle over the curve and now you forget that you came from a periodic representation you just consider all vector bundle over the curve. And it's way more flexible because you don't have this restriction that you came from a periodic representation. And you can do something here, and at the last step, you try to specify to periodic representation. 
So it's an overall very good strategy that they use uh, several times to prove very important theorem in their book. And um, yeah, it's a good trick to have in mind. Okay, back to our problem. So, okay, we proved that the Ardern arrangement slope of E plus V0 are strictly greater than zero. And so let me go back. We can apply this proposition of uh, Farg and Fontaine. And we get with a little bit of something about the uh, cohomology of perfectoid field that uh, the cohomology that we were considering is actually trivial when it is perfectoid. And so that was, that's the, the, one of the step we were looking for to generalize the cotton green barrier computation, cotton green barrier approach. And so uh, now I can state the main theorem somehow, the most general at least. So now you assume only that V is the RAM. So of course, uh, V is the RAM all along, but I just put it for to have all the hypotheses on the board. Then if L is a perfect or it field, and actually you have this commutative diagram here where the rightmost vertical map is the completion map. And so by applying the snake lemma in particular, you see that the quotient that uh, we want to study, uh, the, the question of Coates and Greenberg, is given by this kernel of this completion map. And so the surprising part is that for me, at least when I was uh, doing this, is that this is the difficult part that I'm not able to get rid of completely. So this theorem two, uh, now we uh, imply theorem one by studying this completion map. And uh, briefly, yeah, okay, maybe briefly I explain a bit how and difficulty that arise really. So, by the theorem two, you see it's the cohomology associated with the uh, E plus and E disk and the inclusion of V over T. So instead of looking at the H1 part, you can consider the sequence coming from H0 part. And that gives you a sequence like so, a commutative diagram. And so now why are the hypotheses on, in theorem one useful? It's because if the Hodge state weight of V are less or equal than one, then actually this completion of the tangent space with coefficient in QP bar is simply the tangent space with coefficient in CP. But it's not true in general, it's far for, to be true in general. And so now you, using that and the diagram, you can conclude quite easily because now if you take the Gauguin variant by uh, L, well, TVL is dense in TVL hat because L hat is simply the completion. And a little uh, topological argument gives you that in that case, well, these two, the image of lambda L and the exponential block at a subgroup have to be equal. Okay. So. But the problem uh, for more general uh, uh, weights can be somehow sum up as follow because you see here we use density of L in L hat. And so the problem really to treat the general case is as follow. So the problem is that if L is a perfectoid, then it's not true that L is dense in the invariant of VDR plus. And it's a result of uh, Jovita and Zaharescu from 99. And um, yeah, that's, um, the, that's really, really surprising because if, when you think about the Abin variety case too long, you just see this completion that gives you CP, but in general you get some quotient of BDR plus, which are difficult to control. Um, and so, yeah, basically that's it. I hope I have the impression I was a bit too fast. So if there are any questions, I'd be happy to answer. And maybe let me just say that uh, what I would like to do now from there is like, we know, for example, in the cyclotomy case that it's always true. Like uh, we, the question has been answered completely by Coates and Greenberg. So I think it would be interesting to compare this theorem two, which is also very general in the cyclotomic extension case to try to see in that case, we can recover uh, Berger and Perrin Rigaud's results. And of course, another thing which would be interesting is simply to apply this result on universe, universal norm, this theorem one, which is really precise to study whatever theory of uh, motifs uh, that satisfy this condition. And uh, well, thank you. Uh, 
uh, are there any questions for Gouti? Maybe just a very quick one about your uh, comment about your Rita Zarisco at the end. Yeah. So if you understand correctly, you, you said they, so they construct an example where the density fails? Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, so I, a very pathological example. What's the example? Uh, I think it's already failed for the cyclothymic extension, quite simply. Oh. Uh, honestly, I don't have the paper in mind because it's true that the study, it's not, it's not like, um, yeah, I think uh, it's not, I think the, the, you can find a perfect way where, where it's true. It's that, not sure it's phrased in such a way that it's never true that it's not dense. But uh, I think it's failed quite, quite uh, quickly. Yeah. If I'm if I remember correctly, the cyclotomic extension is already a problem. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thanks. But it, it's it's a bit surprising, so because uh, Berger and Perry result all without any restriction on the weight, and at the same time, for a long time for me it was not the difficult part of the project. I thought I would just deal with it later and that it will just uh, come easily. It's just a completion map, and I, I don't know. I didn't expect to be a problem here. So. Yeah. Right. Uh, can you say something more specific when your representation comes from a modular form? So I know that you, 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 your, your theorem would apply when you have an abelian variety. What about modular yeah. forms? Yeah. Well, yeah, because you see the actually the, this theorem one apply to any sufficiently twisted representation because there is no limit really. It's not like abelian variety where you are in a range. Uh, sorry, maybe oh, there's a lot of style. Oh, I pass it. Sorry. Yeah, sorry. Yes, so this result, you see, it's you just need to know that your hot state weight stops, so you can always uh, sufficiently twist it. But actually, for modular form, it's even more simple than that because, right, depending on the normalization you take. But so usually, what you want is the dual side of this, so that would mean all the hot state weight to be positive, positive or null. And usually, that's how I think about VF being like it's just a uh, hot state weight positive. So already, it's, it will tell you what are the universal norms for modular forms, for example. Mm -hmm. But of course, like um, it might be sometimes a problem. So, for example, uh, I talked with uh, Kazim Boyukbuduk about, about that, and he needs a version of this theorem where he considers the central twist of the representation. So then, this theorem doesn't hold anymore. But okay, sorry. <laughs> but yeah, the, the, it, there is this hypothesis. But the nice thing is that like, somehow you can still say. It, it's not a range, it's just an upper bound. So you can just, uh, mm -hmm. if you are nice enough to just twist your rotation, you can just. Uh... Do you use that, uh, do you use the definition of perfectoidness anywhere in your argument except for? Applying these results no, yeah, you're right. So the, the perfectoid fields reappear. So it's funny because you are interested into them by you as a theory on its own, but they appear really in the theory of Farg and Fontaine uh, to, sorry, yeah, to go to the slide. Yeah, to, to this theorem of Farg and Fontaine is really, perfectoid field is important here. Like that's really, uh, so the underlying to this is like the fact that there exists a curve for L hat instead of taking CP, if you know what the curve is. So here it's phrased in terms of GL equivariant, but underlying is like there exists a curve associated to L in that case. And uh, it's not true uh, in general. Well, I mean, I, I don't know what you could, uh, yeah, that, that's, that's where I use it crucially that it's perfect right there. This is fixed. Well, I, I don't hear you very well, but I hope that it answers your question. Uh, I, I, yes, it did. Yeah. Okay, great. You hear me. Okay. I think there's a question in chat. Oh. Uh, is there's a question in the chat asking you uh, what happens if you replace QP by the um, uh, function field FP double bracket T?
well, I guess it's the next project then. I don't know who has that. <laughs> but, uh, I don't know who has this. Yeah, I, I, probably a big part of the strategy would work because, um, yeah, so I would have to look more precisely because I was really onto this question of Kotz and Greenberg in my mind, so, but, yeah. Anybody in the audience or Gautier know if there are results analogous to Coates and Greenberg in that case? Sorry? Does anybody know if there are results that are analogous to the Coates and Greenberg result you were talking about today in that case? In the ah. double bracket CK. Ah, uh, yeah, I mean, probably because they are, you know, our theory is quite developed in that case, so. Yeah, honestly, I'm surprised that I'm, I didn't even consider that. Yeah, it's a good question. Probably they know because the uh, control theorem has been established also, for example. So it, it, somehow it means that you know something similar to this. Like you have a description of the local, your local condition at P, which is precise enough at least to establish a control theorem. Um, but yeah, I don't know more precisely, sorry. So if there's no more questions, uh, maybe we'll thank OTA again. Thank you. Thank you.